Automation Direct has a wide assortment of stepper motors in both single and dual output shaft versions and different levels of output torque that will usually cover pretty much any need you have. And I have to admit that for simple quick projects, I'll just grab a motor that I know is more than I need to do the job and it usually works just fine. But for those times when you really need to know exactly which motor to choose to reduce size, to reduce weight or to reduce cost to your system, how do you figure out which motor is the best choice? In the Stepper Motor User Manual, Chapter 5 has all kinds of information about the motors, but it doesn't really tell you how to select one. That's because it's not really a motor decision. It's a system design issue. You have to take into account all parts of the system to select the right motor. And the user manual shows you how to do that in Appendix C. That's the good news. The bad news is, if you go to Appendix C, it's kind of intimidating. There's lots of equations and weird symbols and caveats and different things you need to take into account depending upon what kind of system you're building. Yuck. So in this video, we're going to help you demystify all of that and show you it really is pretty easy to figure out exactly which motor you need. There are five things we need to figure out. How many pulses do we need to make the move? What's the position resolution we need? How fast does the motor need to turn? How much torque do we need? And to figure out torque, we'll need to figure out the inertia of the system. Given all those, we'll now be able to select the appropriate motor for our application. We'll use this 18-inch, 0.2 pitch lead screw setup for this video. Then at the end, we'll talk about how to modify that to do the exact same thing for belt drive systems and direct drive indexing tables. Here we go. Step 1. How many pulses do we need? Let's assume one of the moves we need to make on this 18-inch slide is to move the load 3 inches in 1.5 seconds. The pitch of the slide tells us each rotation moves the screw 0.2 inches. And the drive is set up to issue 2,000 pulses per revolution, so we'll need a total of 30,000 pulses to travel the 3 inches. Is that a reasonable number? Well, we need to issue those 30,000 pulses in 1.5 seconds, so our controller needs to output 20,000 pulses per second on average. Can our controller handle that? Well, I'm using a Productivity 2000 controller and it looks like its high speed output module can handle up to a million pulses per second using the RS-422 outputs or 500,000 pulses per second if using the open drain outputs. Either way, we're in great shape since we only need around 20,000 pulses per second. So step one was calculate the number of pulses needed to make the move and then do a quick check to see if our controller can handle it. Step two, how accurately can we control the position of the carriage? We know our lead screw moves the load 0.2 inches for each revolution. And the drive is sending 2,000 pulses per revolution. The units cancel and we get a 10,000th of an inch per pulse. That's pretty good. If we don't need that much resolution, we could switch to a 0.5 pitch lead screw or we could simply reduce the number of pulses per revolution out of the drive. If we need more resolution, we could increase the pulses per revolution out of the drive. We'll use this 10,000th of an inch and move on to step three. How fast does the motor need to turn to do this? Well, we need to move 3 inches and the 0.2 pitch screw says 1 revolution moves us 0.2 inches, so we need 15 revolutions to move 3 inches. We want to do that in 1.5 seconds, so we need to average 10 revolutions per second, which is 600 RPM. Is that a reasonable number? Well, if we go back to those stepper motor curves, we see that steppers tend to operate up to around 1,000 RPM, even up to 2,000 RPM. So if we're around 600 RPM, we're in good shape on average. That is, we need to average 600 RPM to get to the 3 inch mark in 1.5 seconds. The problem is, motors don't instantly go to the max speed and they don't instantly stop, do they? No, they typically accelerate to speed and decelerate back down. And because it takes time to speed up and time to slow down, the peak speed needs to be greater to make up for that lost time so it can still get the carriage where it needs to be in one and a half seconds. How much greater does the speed need to be during this time? The easiest way to handle this is to think in terms of pulses. Back in step one, we found that this was 20,000 pulses per second. And we have to issue a total of 30,000 pulses to complete the move, which is the total area under this graph because pulses per second times seconds is pulses, right? And if we subdivide it into equal triangles like this, we see that there are 10 equal triangles, so each triangle would get one tenth of the 30,000 pulses or 3,000 pulses each. The rectangle has eight of those triangles, 
so it has 24,000 of the 30,000 pulses. And since this is just the area of a rectangle and we know this time is one second, then the frequency must be 24,000 pulses per second. The drive issues 2,000 pulses per rotation, so we need 12 revolutions per second or about 720 RPM. And that's still under the 1,000 RPM or so we typically think of for stepper motors, so we're still in great shape from a speed standpoint. So when you break it down to simple geometries like this, you can easily figure out how many of the total pulses are just in the rectangle portion, and since you know the duration, which is one side of the rectangle, you can figure out this max RPM, which is the other side of the rectangle. If we look at the speed on this motor's torque curve, it looks like we need to be under about 65 ounce inches of torque. And most folks will tell you to stay way under that, even 50%, just to make absolutely sure you have plenty of margin. So how do you calculate torque? Well, that's a little more involved, so we broke it out into a separate video. So take a break, let what we just did sink in, and then click here to go directly to part two, where we calculate the torque required and finally select the motor we need. If you need any help with selecting an Automation Direct stepper motor, please contact Automation Direct's free award-winning support team during regular business hours. They'll be happy to help. And don't forget the forums. There are lots of folks there that love to share their years of experience. Just don't post any questions directed at Automation Direct support staff there. They don't monitor the forums on a regular basis.